If you're looking for a healthy recipe that is full of flavor, you've come to the right spot. Our great friend of the show, Executive Chef Asara Ariank, is back in the Virginia This Morning kitchen, ready to put together a seasonal stuffed butternut squash. He's going to start the dish, and then we'll finish it a little later in the show. But it is simple, Asara. It's not an overly complicated one. Not at all. It's, it's very simple. Um, it's seasonal. All the ingredients are, you know, available in the winter. So um, you pick them as, you know, at their peak time, when they're ripe, they taste better and they're more economical. Butternut squash right now are all over, all over because the place. this is this is high this season. This is season winter squash. This is our finished product. This looks like it's going to be pretty hearty. Yeah, it's, that right there would feed two people. Okay. So, unless you're just one really hungry person, you know. What I mean? Don't look, don't look too closely at this gal, because I probably could put a hurt on that. But that looks delicious. So how do we get started? So first, of course, um, with the magic of television, we have the squash already done. But that takes about 45 to 55 minutes at 350. You want to um, cut it in half, remove the seeds, rub it down with a little bit of oil, put some salt and pepper, a little bit of fresh thyme, and put it in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes at 350. Now, I, I really feel like I would take a, a stab at butternut squash a little more often if they weren't so hard to cut, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, once you have a sharp knife, it's not that difficult. You just, you know, make a little indentation and then you just follow through like a watermelon. Okay, okay so but a good sharp knife is a good. You want to have a sharp knife. Okay, so of course with everything, you see we have a really hot pan. We're going to start with putting some onions in there. That's the sound you're looking to hear. We'll start sauteing that. When you have a really hot pan, what that does is bring out the, um, the natural sugars in the product that you're sauteing. So with those onions, they'll caramelize pretty quickly. And I'm going to add some um, portobello mushrooms to that now. Yum. That'll give it a nice uh, meatiness to yeah, the Yeah, a nice filling. little um, earthy flavor. Goes well with the squash. What you'll notice, too, with, with cooking is that um, Ingredients that grow within the same season, they always blend well with each other. So, mm. Sort of like Mother Nature's way of letting you know, hey, put these things together. They make sense. That's good to keep in mind. Okay, so we have this sauteing. I'm going to go ahead now and add some garlic to it. Just like so. Yum. Mix that around. And you can't let that garlic go too long either because that garlic all. will uh, burn, burn up on you. On you. So as you see now, I can smell it. When you smell it, you know, that aroma, I'm going to go ahead and add on. Um, I got some kale here. I'm going to saute some kale. I know it looks like a lot, but it cooks down into nothing once it, you saute it up. So I got the kale going. I love kale. And I actually, I planted it in my, my garden, and uh, I throw it in smoothies. I mean, it's man, just... It's real versatile. You can use it in a lot of different dishes. And it's really, really, um, you know, it's inexpensive, so... Great for you. Okay, so at, you see that? That's kind of where we want it to be. Now I got some broccoli rabe. Okay. I'll add that into it. And another thing we want to keep in mind is with cooking vegetables is that you don't have to cook them until they're mushy. A lot of the times um, people are used to or accustomed to getting vegetables that are overcooked and they're like really mush. But when you cook them to that point, there's no um, nutritional value left in them. Mm -hmm. We have about 30 seconds left now and we're going to finish this recipe later in the show. But with the, going back to that broccoli rabe, some folks probably just said, what on earth is that? What is it? Well, broccoli rabe is, is called a, um, a cruciferous vegetable. It grows in the winter. Cruciferous is because when it grows, it kind of looks like a cross similar to like a cabbage. And it's actually in the cabbage family, which a lot of people are unaware of. So when it grows, it kind of looks like a, a cross or a plus sign when it sprouts. So that's why it's called a cruciferous vegetable. And that broccoli rabe adds a, it, it reminds you of broccoli, but it has more of a, a, a bitter, bitter flavor, flavor to it, yes. But in an awesome way. And a little bit goes a long way. You don't need much because it's pretty pungent. All right, Asar's got us started. We're going to continue this uh, great, easy recipe uh, after the break. Welcome back to our live show. Executive chef Asar Ariang started a delicious seasonal stuffed butternut squash crea creation just before the break. And now it's time to finish it and put it all together and then do a little quality control. You were definitely the best part of the show right there. Cooking while we uh, took in a few messages there. Yeah, I was just pretty much still sauteing the, um, the same veggies that were in the pan prior to the break. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some um, diced red peppers to it. And you don't have to cook that very long at all. You don't want it to lose all the color, so you want to leave it vibrant. So you just mm -hmm. let that little bit of heat in the pan is fine. At this point right here, I'm going to take the pasta. This is pasta that has been already cooked, and it's shocked. When you cook it, you want to cook it until it's al dente, meaning it has a little bite still left in it, and then you shock it in ice water to completely stop the cooking process. So now I have some hot water here. I'm just going to drop it back in here to sort of wake it up. That's a great way to really reheat it and save yourself some time. Exactly. If you made a big 
pot of it, you know, on the weekend or something. Yep, you can cook ahead and that way you don't have to try to do all of it at once. So it doesn't take long once it's dropped in there. I got this fancy little, you know, strainer. I'm just gonna take this out I of love here. That thing. Drop that in there. For friends just joining us uh, before the break, we put in uh, onion, onion, garlic, garlic, portobello mushrooms, broccoli rob, fresh kale. Okay. Okay. So we're right here at this point. Next thing I'm gonna add is my um, butternut squash. What I, once the butternut squash was roasted, I took a melon ball and I just scooped it out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add that. You put it in at the end because it's already cooked and it's pretty fragile, but if it breaks up on you, don't really worry too much about it because it's just stretching the flavor and making it uniform amongst the dish. So now I have some veggie stock. I'm gonna so, throw that in there. So Asar, you, you said, you know, oh, you were waking up the pasta. You barely had it in there for a yeah, swim. You, that was yep, enough? Yep, that's enough. You know, that water, a water boiling is 212 degrees, so at that simmer, that water's probably like 180 degrees right there. So it really so did just wake just it up. Just wake it up, and then the, you know it's gonna finish the cooking process in this pan right here. And I'm thinking to myself, why couldn't you just throw it in the pan, but I guess it would disrupt the nice heat you have going exactly. there. Exactly, and then you have to build the heat all back up, and it'll take a lot longer. And then some of the vegetables in it will get too soft, mm -hmm. and it won't look as vibrant and good. Okay, so now I got some um, heavy cream I'm gonna put in there. Put the cream in there. Because this was looking pretty healthy, Asar. We had to We just we had, had, to, we, we had about two in ounces there. in there, and I got some fresh thyme around. That's gonna give Yum. it some real nice flavor. Okay, I got a little bit of salt and cracked black pepper. Add a little bit of that in there. And now pretty much all you're doing is simmering it and letting the process, you know, finish out right here. You're marrying all these different flavors here. Oh, we had a little lost soldier right there, jumped oh, out. Well, you know, here I can, I can see if I can <laughs> coerce him back into the pan. Nobody wants to see me just grab it with my, okay, ready? All right, all right there we go. That's what I would do at home. Okay, so, so now this is just simmering. It's coming together. And as that's happening, I'm gonna um, take a little bit of um, shaved Parmesan cheese. Just this put that looks on top. yum. Oh. And then you're, um, you know, you're pretty much done at this point. You just want to mix it around. And there's enough um, residual heat in the pan to continue the cooking process so you don't have to leave it on. Like, we can shut it off. Okay. And the heat that remains in the pan will continue to, you know, let it simmer. If you're using, you know, a cast iron pan that kind of holds it that It holds in a, a lot of heat in there. And the goal here is not necessarily to break up, as you said. You're, you're trying to be gentle and almost folding yes. in. Yes. But if it breaks up, it's no worries. You see, I have one right there. Mm -hmm. But if you have some ones that are broken, it's fine. It's just gonna, you know, lather right over those noodles and, and blend the flavors really well. So you're that pretty, we're delicious. good right there. So okay. the, um, for the plate up process, we have um, a squash. And right you can here. see, you mentioned you used a little melon baller. Yeah, I used to a little the, melon um, baller. And I scooped it there. all out. So pretty much when you see the squash in its initial state, when you slice it in half, you see like a little, you know, a little pocket right here where the seeds are. You scoop that out. And then you, um, you know, you roast it. And then once it's roasted, you melon ball and scoop it out just until it's level to that initial little pocket. Mm -hmm. You want to leave some in there because when you serve it, people are going to still eat the rest of the squash that's inside of there. So it's like a little squash bowl. So a cool uh, a dinner bowl, yeah. There you go. It's a, a dinner, it. a edible dinner bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we do next is... Carefully. Ahead, carefully, just, you know, pour some of that in there. Some butternut squash in me. <laughs> so a little butternut squash. Well, you've got extra. Inside. So yeah, what, we are we gonna, extra. what are we going to do with that? That's, that's your lunch right there. Okay. That extra right there. That's for you. I call dibs. I made a little extra. Yum. Okay, so we got it right there. You see the colors are nice, vibrant. Look at how beautiful that is. And then um, to garnish it, what we'll do is um, we got a little bit more Parmesan. We'll just dust over the top with a little bit. Just like that. Have some fresh chives. I mean, your friends come over and have this, and they feel fancy. Yeah, they, want, they won't want to go home no. after they have that. And then just the last final touch, I have a little bit of balsamic glaze to give it a little bit of a sweetness to it. You just hit it with a little bit of that if it wants to come out. There you go. I was going to say, to, with my luck, it would be that <laughs> giant blob that would come out. It looks beautiful. Asar, thank you so much. You're welcome. And no it's problem. done. It doesn't have to go in the magical oven or Nothing. anything. Done. Ready to go. Nailed it. Thank you. And there's a fork right there. Oh, good. Try it. Perfect. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you know how, how all of it comes together. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Asar. Don't forget, we will have this uh, delicious recipe on our website by early this afternoon, wtbr.com slash VTM. I have a funny feeling this one's going to be a hot, yeah, hot it's bite. it's pretty hot. Hot yeah. bite. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs>